switch off a little lamp because I want to tell you about a vision I had on Thursday afternoon. And um, I was praying in tongues and then the next moment I was like looking down on the throne room and there was a little lamp in the throne room. And I realized that I'm the little lamp because my thoughts were like the little lamp's thoughts and whatever, if I wanted to take a step forward then the lamp took a step forward. So I realized that's me. And as I was standing there, this little lamb, me, was thinking, this is wrong. Because Yeshua is the lamb. What am I doing here? Something is not right with this picture. And then I thought, I'm, I'd better apologize to the Lord for thinking that I'm the lamb. And then as I look up to, when I look at him on the throne, I saw that he's walking towards me and I bent my front legs and I just went, you know, like a camel would bend the front legs to go down in. and and then I realized when I saw him, he was dressed as a shepherd with the shepherd's rod in his hand and he came and he put down the, the staff and he bent down and he and stroked the little lamb's head and he picked the little lamb up and he held it close to his chest and I could just feel the warmth of his body and the warmth of and, and I could feel his heartbeat and then I realized that I am the little lamb because he is my shepherd and I wanted to force myself to stay there, but the vision was gone. As much as I tried to want to go back, it was just, it was over. And later when I got home, this actually happened on the treadmill in the gym. Because um, for as long as I can remember, I started to teach myself whenever I get on a cardio machine to pray in tongues. So, and at times, Lord would just start to speak so much, I would actually literally get off and sit and write down everything. Or run to the reception, ask for a pen and paper, to just write down everything the Lord gives me. So at one stage it was that intense. So, um, so I got down and I went home and you know, you get busy making food, give the cats food and whatever. And eventually I went and I sat down and, and I thought, okay. Lord, it's Thursday evening, I still don't have a sermon for Sunday. So I looked, and, and suddenly the vision, I was reminded of the vision I had. I know, because I, I, I wanted to look something up in a book, so I took out books from Kelly Varner on types, names, and symbolism. And I opened the one book and it fell open on a page where it had the two words, brown and bruise. And I thought, okay, I actually don't have time for this now because I need to look up what I had in mind for a sermon, which was actually the word bride. And as I looked, and I thought, okay, I just feel compelled to read about brown and bruise. So when I read brown, the Hebrew word for, for it is chum, and it means black, brown, or warm. And it also refers to heat and warmth at earth. And the word is found in Genesis 30 in the story where Jacob found a way to have his sheep get multiplied more than Laban's sheep. And how he managed to um, have his sheep been speckled and striped and black and brown. Or if you can go read in chapter 10 the whole story. It's a long story. So that's where it originates from. And some speculate that the saying, um, the black sheep, is from that story, where everybody refers to the black sheep. So then I looked at the word, I looked at bruise, and the Hebrew word for bruise means to be bound with stripes or to have a wheel. That's a blue black mark. 
It also is translated as stripe, wounding, cleansing, chastening, or disciplining. And so the words stripe and bruising and chastening reminded me immediately of Isaiah 53, um, verse 5 to 7, which says, He, Yeshua, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid his iniquity, our iniquity on him. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he not opened his mouth. He, like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. Like a sheep that before it shearers is silent, he opened not his mouth. So, in both of these words, I'm going to cover the rest now. All I found was sheep and lambs. Sheep and shepherds and lambs. I thought, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. Can the idea I had for today's sermon. God's got another message for us. So, we know that Yeshua is the shepherd. Now, in John 10, he's called the good shepherd. Where he says, yeah, my sheep hear my voice. And he came to, to save the black sheep, those who are sinful, mankind. He came to save us and th from eternal damnation. He is the shepherd that gathers the sheep into the fold, where they can be protected. In the staff is, a, is symbolic of discipline, but also of protection. If they wandered off too far, remember it's got a look like that, then they would just look and bring them back. He's also called the great shepherd that laid down his life for his sheep. We find that in Hebrews 13 verse 20. And then he's also called the chief shepherd. I never knew there was all these different words in the Bible. Good shepherd, great shepherd, chief shepherd. Um, 1 Peter 5 verse 4. He is the chief shepherd whom we are waiting to come and give us crowns of glory. And then he's also the breaker shepherd that you know in Micah 2 verse 13 that brings the sheep into the sheepfold but he's also the one that, that breaks open the gate so we can go free. So we can be set free from affliction and deliverance and oppression and whatever comes against us. I just want to read to you Micah 2 verse 12 to 13. And, and when I read this verse, you know, you sort of know it. And, oh, let me just read again. And then I just realized how detailed the Lord is. Because when I read Isaiah 53, 5, I never... You know, you want to stop at verse 5 that says um, he was bruised for our iniquities. But you read on and then you find that it mentions the sheep. Now here in Micah, it mentions Jacob besides the sheep and the shepherd. I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the remnant of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture, a noisy multitude of men. He who opens the bridge goes before them. They break through and pass through the gate, and the king passes on before them, the Lord on their head. So he's the leader shepherd. He is the breaker shepherd. He's also the one that gathers. So he's the shepherd that gathers as well. I found this in Matthew Henry Concise commentary on Matt Micah 2. It says, He is a breaker that broke through, that rent the veil, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Because he was the first lamb that entered the throne room, that made it possible for all us, the lambs, to also enter there. So he 
opens that gate, he rends the veil of Calvary. He opens, um, and then he says, that Bishop Pearson applies it to the resurrection of Christ, by which he obtained the power and became the pattern for us in the resurrection. The break has gone up before us out of the grave. Because he, he is the matron, he is the patent son for all of us. He went first so that we can follow. So he opened the way. He was a pioneer for me, coming out of the grave, tearing the veil, getting out of the grave so we can get out of our graves. So we can get into that throne room. And then there's another one, and this describes that whole throne room scene. I, I'm actually just getting emotional thinking of it now, because <laughs> um, I didn't expect to get that whole thing in, a, in one scripture verse in the Bible, where he's called the gentle shepherd, that feeds his flock like a shepherd. And it's in Isaiah 40 verse 11. And he shall gather the lambs in his arms, and he will carry them in his bosom, and he will gently lead them. How awesome is that? Sure. That's exactly what Yeshua did there, to gather the lambs, to hold them close to his bosom, where we could enter his presence, because that is symbolic of his presence. And we were found worthy. That little lamb, as you saw on the video, that, that just hop, skip, and jump. And we are worthy, even as little lambs, to come before the Father. And it also, to me, it just speaks of a childlikeness, just of a, a innocence. Because in our spirits we've been made perfect and that's what gives us access into the throne room of God and we can come before Father as little lambs but you know what, we can go play in the mud we can go roll in the mud and we will still be walking in that throne room you, we, it's just through Yeshua that we were made without blemish and he was the lamb on whom all the sins of the world were projected on the cross. He took everything on him so that we can be blameless, so that we can enter the presence of the Lord, so that we can experience and feel his heartbeat, so that we can be held tight and close and feel the warmth of his love and the protection of his arms. And you know, in the Old Testament, you will remember that a lamb had to be without blemish. No bruise, no wound. They had to be pure before they could be qualified to be sacrificed. And we know in the New Testament, Jesus became that lamb. So yes, he is the lamb that went before us as the lambs. So we're all lambs of God. We are sheep of his pasture. So when I went to bed last night, I said to the Lord, okay, but I feel there's something more. It's like there's something mi missing on the message. Because here we get all of that and it's it's awesome to know that. But there's something missing. And the Holy Spirit said to me, so I said, I need more. Um, what is actually your message, Lord? Go deeper with me. And that deep wasn't very deep. It was actually so obvious. Because the Lord says, the message to you is Psalm 23. And that's when I fell asleep. 
So this morning, the first thing I wanted to do was to just read Psalm 23 again and see. The Lord is my shepherd. He is all that I need. He will make me lie down in green pastures to walk this way as rest he will leave me. Peace. So by the way, before I carry on, the Hebrew for the Lord my shepherd is Jehovah Roy. So he is our Jehovah Roy. He renews my strength. He restores my soul. He leads me to paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, even when we go through the most horrific persecution or affliction or trials, he's always close by our side. His rot and his staff comforts us, protects us guides us, leads us. And He prepares a table for us, a feast in the presence of our enemies. It's our choice whether we want to go sit at the table. He honor us by anointing our heads with oil so that our cups overflow. He took the cup of bitterness so we can drink of his cup of blessings. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life so that I can live in the house of the Lord forever. So that we don't have to go to the throne. We don't have to go home. We are home. We will be home permanently. So that is what the Lord wants to say to us today. Is I am your shepherd. I'm there to protect you, to guide you, to lead you, to bless you, to love you, to cuddle you, to hold you, to oppose those that oppose you, to be an enemy to those that you are enemy. So close your eyes.